All right, next we're going to work on this uh, kind of content splash uh, screen area here. Uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right. Now, what I want to do is we're going to bring in this image here and kind of see how it works. Um, so let's go ahead and make a group and we'll call this content. And we'll go ahead and drag the content background in there. Um, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make another group. And we're going to call this uh, photo. And we're going to use uh, masking. Um, we're going to use masking to uh, kind of crop out the uh, the edges of the photo that we don't want. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and select this uh, rounded box or make a selection out of it. Uh, the simplest way to do that would be to hold down control and go ahead and click on the layer. And that'll make the selection. And as uh, you've learned from uh, previous tutorials on masking, um, when you create a layer mask, it will um, automatically uh, mask out everything but the selection. So let's go ahead and create that layer mask. Now, of course, we don't see any changes. And that's because we don't uh, we don't have anything in this group yet. But you'll see what's going to happen is when we come over here to this image and we select all and copy it, we can come in here and paste it. And it's going to go in that group. And now everything outside of this uh, content area is going to be masked out. And the beauty of this is we can kind of play with the positioning of the image by just dragging it around and all the while it'll stay out uh, or inside this area. So it gives us some versatility here when we while we're working on the site if we want to change it. Uh, but uh, now that that's in here I really don't like the image very much. Um, so I'm going to find another image. Alright, I found an image that I like. Um, so we'll go over here and we'll select all and copy it. And come over here and we'll paste it. Now the issue with this uh, image is it is definitely not big enough to fill uh, the space here. So let's just drag it over here to the edge. And bring it up to where we like it. Um, and let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, power button here by dragging it down to the uh, trash can. And we'll go ahead and change this to just call it photo. Um, and what we can do is we can use some more masking to kind of blend this in with our background. Um, we're already have an advantage here because these are the buttons that are going to go here. Um, so we really only need to worry about it uh, up to this point. So the first things first, I'm going to make this gradient here match our photo a little better. So we'll come in here and we're going to edit our gradient. And this is why I said I didn't want to spend too much time when I was making the gradient because I didn't really know what direction we were going to go yet. So let's double click on this first stop here. And let's drag this down a little more. And there we're pretty close. It looks like we're a little more purple though. And again, we can always come back in and make some changes. Say OK, and let's go to this stop here. And we'll kind of get use our eyedropper here and get kind of the lighter shade of, the shade of blue that's up here. And we'll say OK. And OK. And OK again. 
All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask um, on this photo here. And uh, we're going to use brush to mask it out. So we'll just, we won't worry about selecting anything. We're just going to create a blank mask. And let's come over here to our brush. And we'll make sure the hardness is all the way down. Uh, this is way too big. So we'll use the left bracket tool to make it smaller. And let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And get our brush tool again. And let's just go ahead and paint some black on here. And we're going to kind of, we're not going to be too harsh with it. We're going to kind of lay, lay right on the edge here. Um, so that we don't take away from the clouds or anything. Go ahead. We're going to go ahead and hide our uh, guidelines so we can see what's going on right at this point. So we'll come to view and click on show and uncheck guides. There you go. This is still a little rough. You can see where we cut it off here. So I'm going to paint in just a little more. And actually, I think I'm going to bring the brush up a little more so it's even softer and just kind of click a little bit and give it a little bit of variant and then I'm going to flip it back to white and come in and touch it up a little and back and that's good for now let's go ahead and zoom out so there you have we solved that problem um, I almost want to make this gradient still a little lighter so let's come back into our gradient overlay. Move this out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And let's we're just going to change this darker stop and we're going to bring it a little lighter. There we go, that's perfect. Let's say okay and okay. One thing that's very noticeable now is that our our uh, little header gradients here are not matching the colors uh, in, in the content area. So, um, as I mentioned before, these are just placeholders um, because, you know, we don't want to come through and, and change each gradient for each bucket. So let's close this here and we'll go to buckets and bucket one here which if I was uh, keeping these I would have labeled them in, in order the right way here so we're actually gonna edit bucket four over here so let's open up our gradient overlay and we'll click on the gradient and for the first stop let's go ahead and select this uh, darker blue. Say OK. And for the second stop, let's come in here and get one of the lighter blues. There we go. That's good. And say OK. And OK. And OK. Um, in the event that we, we did uh, make these buckets prematurely, uh, we can very easily right click on this bucket header and say copy layer style and go to the other buckets and paste that layer style but like I said we uh, normally before we would make all four of these we would have done all the text and everything too so we can save some time but for now we'll just leave them as is um, everything's now starting to take uh, shape let's take a look at our screenshot again and it looks like we're pretty much done with the uh, graphical elements um, so we can start moving on to text